When we last met, the characters were all assembled in the manor dining hall, deciding on their next move. A sound coming from a nearby window alerted the group to a paper bird message that flew in a figure eight over Samael's head and then fell into his hands. The transformed pentagonal piece of parchment held a message from the silver flame requesting that Samael investigate an alleged monster trapped in a bookstore. The paladin was instructed to meet the owner of the store, Uva Solisef, at Gelf's House of Cheddar in the Bazaar District. The party elected to, com to accompany Samael on this mission, traveling to the district via Mr. R's flying coach. When they arrived at Gelf's, they began looking for Uva, and after some directions from one of the servers that had helped them before, the party made contact with the nervous shopkeeper. Uva then explained that a blind hobgoblin wearing rags had entered her store earlier in the day, inquiring about books on dimensional seals. She had informed the individual that she carried no such tomes on that subject, but the hobgoblin was insistent and refused to leave. The hobgoblin became irate, revealing strange tentacles from its chest and chasing her cat, Philippa, around the store. Uva immediately left the store, locking the hobgoblin inside, and sought out the city watch for help. The watch blocked off the building and summoned the silver flame to consult on the creature. The party agreed to deal with the threat immediately, following Uva outside of the tavern and towards her store on the edge of Harith's Folly. Once there, the group were informed by the watch that two men had gone inside and had not come back out. The party took Uva's key and entered the bookstore and began in their investigation. They observed the body of a watchman a few feet away from the front door, close to a staircase. The group explored the ground floor before heading upstairs, following a trail of blood. On the second floor, the party encountered a goblin-like creature with multiple arms. It immediately attacked the party and was dealt with quickly. The party found yet another of these creatures, and a much larger one that resembled the description Uva had given. The larger creature attacked Samael, demanding that they surrender a book. The party worked together and defeated the creatures, finding a metallic disc made of a strange purplish metal on the creature's body. The metal appeared to have some sort of negative reaction in response to touching the creature's skin. Zara identified her companions that the creature was more than likely an aberration called a Dolgaunt. The group captured Philip of the Cat with some difficulty and reunited the animal with Uva. The watch then began to dispose of the bodies inside of the shop while the party investigated and interviewed Uva about the disc and the possibility of finding the book. Uva explained that the disc was part of Philip's collar and that the animal had been wearing it for the last 30 years, ever since its previous owner passed away. The shopkeeper did not appear to know anything further about the book that the creatures were looking for, or the alarming amount of intelligence that Philippa appeared to exhibit. Nicholas then elected to keep the strange disc for now, promising to return it. The group headed back upstairs after the heated exchange with a watchman and explored the book stacks. Nicholas investigated one such bookshelf and found a sliding mechanism controlled by a button. Just behind the bookshelf was a small alcove built into the wall, with a silvery cloth bundle inside. A strange book lay within the bundle, with an unorthodox locking clasp. The keyhole resembled an, an indentation the exact dimensions as the strange metal disc they had found. Nicholas then inserted the disc into the lock and there was a brilliant flash of light. A sensation of acceleration grips you all as you're hurled through the void. Pinpricks of starlight become blinding streamers that streak past your bodies. This feeling of hurtling through the cosmos comes to an abrupt stop as you feel your stomachs all turn over, threatening to empty their contents. One by one, you begin opening your eyes, finding yourselves still within the bookstore. 
The light that was streaming in from the windows outside, though, just a moment before, appears to be a bit dimmer. Several of the bookshelves are overturned, and chunks of the walls and the roof are scattered, and appear to be slowly drifting just a few inches above the floor. The book that Nicholas had opened is currently floating just a few feet away from him, with the clasp unlocked and open. That was a little unnerving. What happened? I don't know. I just I just put the, the disc in the lock and opened it up. I'm going to reach out and grab the book and pull it to me. I think it was just him trying to blind us. As you begin looking around the room... As each of you begin to look around the room and get some bearings and begin lifting yourself off of the floor, you feel a sensation instantaneously of feeling somewhat buoyant. It's as if gravity has changed for you, all of you. And you find yourselves sort of stutter step bouncing up and down off of the floor as you stand up. Too much exertion from pulling yourself up causes you to drift up into the air several feet and you touch the ceiling and then find yourself floating back down. Siegfried almost right away starts just jumping and doing flips around. Zara clutches her stomach. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Now do we have floating vomit around us? The... I'll tell you what. Czar, roll a constitution saving throw. All In fact, right. I need everyone to roll a constitution saving throw. I thought I'd be okay from all the circus tricks. So, <laughs> and now it's like flipping through the air. Surprisingly, everyone except for Zara has just vomited, and oh, okay. you all see just this uh, cascade of what should have gone straight to the floor has now sort of spurt out like like it, like almost as if it's underwater and the chunks slowly f drift through the air and spread out cascade out from your bodies and just kind of splat against the book stacks and the chunks of debris that are currently floating through the air thanks Ara. i thought i had it under control and still you started to try mommy i, I want to get off <laughs> sorry It was the dry heaves that got us all. Can we see out th through the windows? Is there anything, anything going on in the streets, or is it just we restricted to inside the building? We could before the vomit. <laughs> yeah, you can make your way to a window if you want to look outside. Yeah, I'll stumble my way over. Okay. Um, Byron, as you head to the window, the familiar sign of the Bazaar District, the line of shops around the towers next to Har Harris Folly, the Tavern dist District, is completely gone. What you see before you is 
haze then a bit of a mist and as you kind of reach out and sort of try to rub the the window there's a, a bit of condensation which is from the outside which is preventing you from really seeing much but through this bit of a haze this misting of moisture you see an absolutely alien landscape something that you have never seen before in all your life but it's hard to make out anything more than a few feet in front of you you can see hills and valleys in the distance what you assume to be you can just make out the dark shapes and you can see vegetation spread here and there and the vegetation appears to be of a nature that is very unfamiliar to you in all your travels on th all throughout Corvair and in Kyber and the underworld you've never seen vegetation like this well well Nick do you know where you brought us uh, I I have no idea I'm going to look through the book and see if I can see any words on, on the pages. Uh, I, I know where we're at. We're in Pukeville. There's nowhere else that we puke like this, right? And he's just, like, drifting and floating around with the books, just completely. Nicholas says, as you open the book, there is a brilliant flash of light, almost as intense as the brilliant flash of light that you saw before this strange transportation occurred and emitting from the book and illuminating the room is this glowing light this bright white light and one once before before you opened the book you had started to feel a sensation an almost a clawing at the back of your head prickles on the back of your neck and the moment that you open the book and the light emits, that sensation is gone. And Siegfried and Samael, I need you both to make constitution saving throws. Both Siegfried and Samael... Hey, well, broken. Both Siegfried and Samael collapse to the collapsed not falling immediate to the floor but they just sort of go unconscious and free float in the air where they, where they were the light continues to emit and does not stop while you have the book open close that damn thing oh I think I know where we are is there any words on the page at all or is it just light coming through the, from the book there are words on the page, however, they are of a language that you do not understand unless you know Draconic. No, I don't. I'm going to close the book. Okay. Um, the moment that you do, Siegfried and Samael immediately snap awake. <laughs> what, what, what happened? Uh, I, I, didn't fall, I didn't fall asleep, I swear. Where are we? What's what's going on? Are you guys all right? Do you feel uh, sensitive? Does your head hurt? And she goes through and does a little assessment. I'm fine. I'm fine. So what do the books say? As you look at Samael, as he says, I'm fine, I'm fine, his face has changed. His features have morphed and become skull-like, but not human skull-like. He now resembles that of a ram's skull, with horns protruding from his forehead. Ah, uh, Samael? You yes? don't look alright, and she takes a little mirror that she has tucked under her pouch and holds it up for him to see. I brush it aside, I don't have time for this. What does the book say? No, really, y you should really take a look. No, I have no, no time no, for this. Really, you you should really take that look. And Zara, when you turn around to hear that voice, you see a second Siegfried floating just a few feet away from the group. Who is that handsome devil right over there? He looks really sexy if I say myself. 
Oh wait, it's one got no, it's not it's, it, it's not a Hey, hey bud. Uh why don't you pipe down for a minute and let me t real talk to these people, okay? Yeah, someone's got a real talk anyways, and I don't got a bad bone in my body right now, so go ahead, my friend. Uh, so, uh, seriously, folks, um, I've been watching y'all for a while now, and uh, for the most time, most, most of the time, you, you seem to be taking care of my friend here, um, quite well, but, but, um, I'm not really sure what's going on now or where we even are or why you can see me you guys can all see me right no. unless I'm going crazy I hope so <laughs> yes I kind of look at both of them and like oh no okay somehow okay. shrugs looks at him and says no oh okay um well, that's interesting. No one's been able to see me before, except for sometimes really, really small children. Okay, then. Um, well, uh, I'm just going to sit over here and think on things for a while if you guys want to continue with your business with this weird book. Nick, what does the book say? I couldn't read it, Samael. Uh, it was in Draconic. You know How do you read Draconic? Yes. Careful, Careful about opening that. Feel like I'm, I feel quite upset that you you all ignored the other me. Ugh. I'm going to go sit in the corner as well. Very well. Look, I'm going to try opening the book again. Now. Okay. Um, the book opens, and the brilliant flash of light illuminates the room once again. And you see the pages before you are definitely in Draconic. Very well. Do I understand what this say? You do. The very first page appears to say that this particular tome is something called the Grimoire of the Ebon Mother. And it is a spell book, which is a collection that once belonged to the Ebon Mother. And there's a warning in Draconic that states Beware those who do not follow the path of the gatekeepers for those who open this tome who do not follow that path will be doomed to the realm of madness for all time. Well, I should be fine then. I'm a servant of the keeper. It's a different kind of keeper. Oh. Whoops. Samael, what did it say? It says we're all going to go crazy and die. Huh. Well, is there any way out? Me crazy? I'd never become crazy. Uh, you're probably the most sane one out of all of us. Much obliged, my friend. I'd say you're probably the second most sane out of everyone here. Thank you. And the best looking, I might add. Thank you, my good sir. Nick, I have to say, after Samael, I have to say you're close to being the best looking with Byron Jam behind. Zara, we're kind of ego stroking right here, so I hope you understand that I have to put you in the back in this case. <laughs> None take. As you're all getting accustomed to this weird situation, you all suddenly hear the sound of someone yelling from downstairs. And it sounds like that sound is now traveling outside of the building. Does it sound distressed? It does. I'm rushing down there to see what it does. I am right behind Samaya. Samaya, wait. Oh, we investigate first. And they can be dead after you wait. Let's go now. People, right. Ginger, save now. Let's go! I'll follow behind quickly. As you all begin rushing downstairs, you notice that the door to the shop is wide open. And you, you just catch a glimpse 
Samael of a man running into this alien thicket, tearing his clothes off. And you watch just as he disappears into the mist. And you can hear him continuing to yell. Everyone hold. I've lost sight of the man. He's somewhere in the mist ahead, but we need to proceed cautiously. If he's running to his doom, we don't want to run into it with him. Should should we also take our clothes off? It's possible that it the mist may hurt people wearing clothes. That's uh, an assumption. I don't think I'm right, but I'm probably right. Like I, Other Siegfried Other... has already taken his clothes off. Put your clothes back on. I oh. fear for oh. us taking our clothes off in a I mean, group such as this or... To be honest, Siegfried okay. also, I also take my clothes off to match the other Siegfried. I'm, I don't I'm, know. If I'm right, I'm right. Put your clothes back on. If we all take our clothes off, then you all kill yourselves after I take mine off. Nope, it's best fine. to put them my on. clothes back on. Other Siegfried sheepishly begins putting his clothes back on. He says, I mean, how do you guys know that I don't just walk around naked all the time? Jeez. Because you have on clothes. I do, but he doesn't. He could just be trying to mimic me to make sure everyone's sane because they can see him. Did you want me to try to track him? I think we should proceed forward cautiously. You can try, but do not get ahead of the group. Um, take a lead about 15 feet in front of us. Can we see within 15 feet of the middle? Um, you can see that just beyond, um, it seems like the mist is beginning now to dissipate. And just, that, just beyond the doorframe, you're starting to see more of the landscape around you. Byron, you can proceed ahead, but never leave eye shot of the group. I want to be able to keep an eye on you just in case anything happens. All right. Okay, we will proceed out the door with Byron in the lead, me behind Byron. Um, after that, we will pull in Nicholas behind me, Zara behind him, and I will leave the two Siegfrieds in the rear. They seem like they have the most potential to make noise right now. Okay. Um, as you each begin to exit the bookstore can see that a chunk of the street has been transported with all of you and this building. And looking up, you see the entire building has come with you. And as you look from the building and the bits of pavement that have been transported with you, you find yourselves in this strange alien landscape. The mist begins curling back. And in this glancing around, up and down, you find that the strange place seems to consist of many stacks of translucent layers. Looking up, you see that there's no sky, just another layer of another realm on top of you. And looking down below you, you see yet another membranous plane. Like you're, like you're in the midst of a stack, of sandwich, like a sandwich stack. And there appears to be no end to this membranous stack. On the current stack that you are in, in the distance you see massive drifting entities, free-floating rivers of a milk-white liquid, and rain of blue globes falling from an unseen height, only to burst and release horn-sized ticks when they strike another object. And you see a non-Euclidean geometric shape, massive, the size of a mountain, floating and drifting through the layers. Huge gelatinous worms wriggle from layer to layer, winding through the tentacled vegetation encrusted with a strange orange moss all suspended above this amoebic sea and as you step off you find that outside of the the immediate as you, you begin to get used to this feeling of lesser gravity your feet begin to sink into this amoebic sea several inches and you're now all standing ankle deep in this gelatinous layer and Nicholas, are you holding the book open or closed? I am no longer holding the book. It's uh, Samael's holding the book. 
I have it currently closed on Loctite. You closed it? Yes. Okay. Um, when you close the clasp, the key stays in it. Okay. So the clasp is closed, but not locked. Like, you can still pull it open and open the book if you want. Gotcha. So also, can I make a religion check to see exactly where we are if I recognize us? Um, sure, go ahead. Thank you. Do I recognize where we are? In the many years that you have trained as a paladin for the Silver Flame, you have heard tales of a area just beyond the astral plane, a realm of madness, a place called Zoriat, a place that 10,000 years ago once spilled armies of aberrations onto the face of Eberron and nearly wiped out the Goblin Empire. You are shocked with this realization and that you are more than likely within that realm right now. I'm going to express this with uh, no small amount of awe to my companions as to where we currently are, as to where I believe we currently are. Okay. Zara, as you're holding your halberd, it begins to vibrate. Just slightly. Slight tremble. Not as strong as before when you entered the second floor of the bookstore, before you encountered the creatures. Well, at least it seems safe out here. I don't see any immediate danger. I'm going to try to uh, trap the the guy that left uh, the building. Hey okay. guys. Yes? Just so you know, my halberd's vibrating. It might mean danger's near, so... Very well. Alright guys, don't make any unnecessary noise. Uh, Baron, you can proceed. I'm right, trying to walk. Alright, he's there within 30 feet. Though. Um... I'll just have my bow ready and just uh, keep a slow pace. Thanks. As you press and... forward, Byron, the ground seems to ground it. It literally grounds you somewhat. This gelatinous layer has a bit of a a, a sucker-like sensation. It seems to be counteracting this loss of gravity as you step through it. But it doesn't hinder your movement, and you're able to move through the vegetation with a fair amount of ease. And if you'd like to track this individual, make a survival check for me. Just giving a, a cursory glance and looking around, you can see where before this bioluminescent layer that you, you can just make out faint areas where it looks like um, feet shapes going off into the distance. Can I tell how fast he's moving? Is Look, he running? Is he walking? It looks like a, a wide gate. Okay, so he's running. Oh, he's sprinting. Well, we're not going to catch him with my pace being a walk, a slow walk if he's running. 
Sam, what do you want us to do? Let's still proceed towards his direction. He may run into something that stops him along the way. All right. Uh, as I'm looking back, can I still see the building that we were in? Yes, you can see it. And looking at it, it seems to be sinking now into this membranous layer. And you watch as the door slowly is dropping down as the foundation of this building is sinking into this gelatinous mass, apparently too heavy for this lair. Oh, gosh. And you all watch in horror as this two-story bookstore sinks below the lair and continues to sink and sink and sink until all you can see beyond this bioluminescence that emits from the amoebic sea is a dark mass that gets smaller and smaller. And as you, continue, no as you continue to watch, you suddenly see something large, a dark shape that moves in front of this mass. And you hear a crunching noise, like a compression. <coughs> and there's a give where it once sat on top of this membranous mass and chunks of wood and, and brick and stone emit and erupt and vomit forth up into the air and you watch as it floats up in the air into a cascading pattern up, up, up and away until you no longer see the bits of what once was the bookstore yeah, well, that's not a way out I hope no one left anything in there well, the book brought us in, and we still have the book with us. I'd say we didn't lose anything there. Well, guys, uh, we might have cost that woman your livelihood. Uh, we better have a bit of good excuse for that if we ever get back. If it was in madness, it might possibly be that only our spirits came over. You never know. Best not to judge. Maybe hey, she other secret. Really you know what? You know, no, 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 no. other secret. You all moth. Do you know anything about that? Do you know if that physically came here and we actually did chest fish? Oh yeah, you guys are fucked. I'm still gonna say, yeah, this is just our spirits. I'm totally still going with that. Guys, Back me up on. let's take read. I don't think the bookstore has spirit. Oh, before we proceed, Zara, what were you trying to tell me earlier before I grabbed the book? Um... Zara, as you look, Semiel, with the look of concern in his eyes, he still has this visage of a ram, and the horns are curling. And as you're staring at him, it appears like the horns are starting to curl even more and get longer. And his head is starting to look even more goat skull-like. Uh, Semiel, I mean no offense, but you look like a goat. And she shows her the mirror again, him in the mirror again. Samael, when you, you look into the mirror, you see the same thing you see every day when you look into a mirror. Okay. <sighs> well, thank you, Zara. Let's proceed. I mean, did I offend you? I, I, no, I not mean, at all. I mean, do you, do you see that, Sa uh, Nick? Doesn't he look like a goat? Do I see him as who he is or as a goat? You see Samael as he is. Um. Uh, yeah, honey, he, he he definitely looks like a ram. Yeah, and I pat him on the back. Yeah, man, you're really strong. Yeah, and I and I I, I wink at him, uh, uh, Samael. Oh come on, I'm being serious. He looks. You mean like, like a? Are you mean like a mountain ram? Like a ram skull, like, like the bone ram. head of a ram. Oh, I didn't mean to call you a bone head. Uh, no. All right, I'm. I'm just gonna sh shut up. I'm gonna pull out my holy symbol. Um, uh, the not the silver flame holy symbol, but the personal one that I carry with me. It uh, currently is engraved with the skull head of a ram, and presented to her. Does it look like that? It looks exactly like that. Her eyes go wide. Yes, it looks. Exactly like that. 
That's not good. What does it well, mean? Um, I use this as my holy symbol, but this is not the holy symbol of my church. This is the holy symbol I received um, back during the morning. It was an item I received during that event. Um, it's kind of hard to explain what it means. It's not good. Either way, let's proceed forward. We're not going to fix it by standing here. Oh, As he God. says the morning, Siegfried visually cringes. It's all right. Where we are now is far worse. Come on. Okay. Okay. Um, what is, right, what is follow what? Byron's lead? Are you going to follow Byron? Of course. Keeping him just within the eyesight. I'm going to move really stealthily. Pull up my cro double crossbow. I'll continue on. Okay. Continue forward. The sound of the screaming man now has subsided. And you can no longer, none of you can now, can can hear him anymore. And after a while, the footsteps that you once saw before in this gelatinous membrane give way. And you start seeing bits of viscera and blood. And as you cut through, running through this thicket, this alien fungal thicket, you come spill out into an area and you see a mass, reddish mass, in the midst of the clearing. And what looks like several creatures chewing and eating this, this man. I'm on motion for Bowron to make a surprise attack. Okay, I will... Uh... I'll cast Hunter to Mark on the first, the closest, and uh, let's roll initiative. Uh, yes. Do you want me to make an attack too? Well, your attack is much louder than Mark's. I have a silencer, remember? Have you ever used a silencer in real life? <laughs> I'm not using my gun either. I, I said crossbow. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Okay. I'm going to throw you on the map, and then I'm going to okay. share the map with you guys. Gonna be funny with two Siegfrieds on the board. Da, 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 da! Hey Siegfried, you want me to kill the other ones? Go ahead and uh, cure your ailment. I don't know <laughs> what ailments you're talking about. Right, sharing a map. Hopefully it doesn't crash Fantasy Grounds. Hey, our orders are wrong. You guys can move yourselves around if uh, to the way it should be if you want. Yeah, it loaded. Awesome. Sweet, I'm Matt. supposed to go there next to Byron. 
Sweet map, Jeremy. I wonder where it goes up. I know, right? It looks really flat. Right. This like this looks like something I. So. You get a surprise round uh, to attack one of these creatures, there, Byron. All right. Oh, let me. Well, I'll make an attack. Uh, is this with advantage? Yes. That's a nice hit. You all watch as Byron's arrow from his sneak attack arcs across. whipping past leaves of vegetation and strikes the creature in its head. The creature gives out a one shriek and falls dead. I'll put the next one into the other. We only get one attack on a surprise round. Okay. Tran I'll transfer the uh, hunter's mark. Okay. Uh, the creature turns around, or I should say its its long neck pulls up, bits of blood and viscera dripping from its jaws, and its spider-like body spins around as it sees its companion has fallen dead, and it stares in your direction, and immediately begins running towards you all. Does it see them, or does it only see me, being that I wasn't sneaking? It goes straight for you, somehow. Good. And Nicholas, it is your turn. The move and but uh pulled up my cross and uh, uh I had to think you did a really awesome forward roll like you tumbled into position. Both bolts fly through the air and decapitate the creature. And I'm gonna <clears throat> and load two more bolts in. I got you covered. Am I out? As you, as the creature falls, Zara, your halberd begins vibrating violently. And you all watch as creatures begin piling out of the mists and rushing towards you all. Benson, it's, uh, it was a lot. Can I garner how many? Uh, you're about to. Like you're actually all of you are about to see. You all see ripples of movement as these creatures come crashing and screeching out. Is that the rest of your turn, Nicholas? Um, yeah. 
I'm, and, uh, I'm gonna fall back in line. Can I yell something to the team, or do I need to wait for my turn? Speaking is a free a is a free action, but it's it's not going to affect their outcome. Like they they can't use that. It's essentially, you're just like, hey, watch out, that sort of thing. I just want to yell, everybody, come to me. Do not be caught out of one. And you all watch as this beast, almost a dog-like creature, comes rushing straight towards you, Nicholas. And as it gets closer to you, you see that it has multiple eyes that are white. And the light from the eyes become painfully blinding. And I need you to make a dexterity save. Uh, uh, as I try to jump out of the way. It's more like you put your hand up to your eyes to avert your gaze. You just pull your hand up over your eyes as this thing rushes towards you. And let's see. I also need Zara, Siegfried, and Samael. I need you three to also make dexterity saves. Samael and Siegfried, you or Zara, you're able to shield your eyes for a moment as this creature rushed towards all of you. Samael and Siegfried, you are both blinded. Very well. And Siegfried, it is your turn. You are currently blinded. Ah, bloody... Ugh. He tries to draw his rapier and just pulls his action because he can't do anything anyways. I can't... See? Ah, murky, mucky. Ugh. You hear from behind, from behind you, Siegfried, you hear other Siegfried go, Look out, dummy! I can't see! I'm blinded. And one of the spindly creatures begins loping towards all of you. And Samael, it is your turn. You hear the sound of splooshing as something has rushed and gotten closer to you. And it appears to be directly in front of you. You can still attempt to attack it even though you are blinded. Oh yeah. Samael always attempts. That, unfortunately, is a miss. You turn around with your Keeper's Fang, and you okay, try to stab at the creature, and you just hear it whoosh over its head as you hear a, sort of a strange throaty snarl. <laughs> is that the end of your turn? Uh, yes. The second... Siegfried rushes forward and says, Samael, look out! And just manages to <laughs> miss. Silly Siegfried. Siegfried's can't. And Zara, it is your turn. going to saunter up to this guy and I am going to pull up my 
and take a swing at it. Okay. And that is a hit. You take your halberd and you reach forward and smack the creature. Hacking it into its side with the blade. And she's like, man, is that all it can do? And uh, she's going to stay right there and end her turn. You know you have a bonus action attack. Oh, I do. I you, thought that was only... You are um, a war priest. You can do that a certain number of times equal to your ability modifier. Correct. I mean, sure. Why not? I'm going to use my bonus action and smack it again. That, unfortunately, oh. is a miss. As you pull back the long weapon... It seems like, as you're getting used to it, it seems like this type of weapon is better suited if you were a little bit further away from your target. Um, this weapon does give you reach, um, Zara. So going forward, you can be within 10 feet of a creature and hit it. Oh, awesome. And is that complete your turn? Yep. When does she have had advantage? Nope, not a rogue. The creature now attempts to attack you, Nicholas. Oh, oh. First, lunging out with its jaws, attempting to gr gouge a chunk out of your leg. It just misses. The jaws snap shut as you just shift out of the way. And then reaches forward with its claws and attempts to claw at you with both of them. But both attacks just couldn't find purchase. You're just sort of dodging and moving this way and that way as it bites and swipes. And Siegfried... Go ahead, uh, let's see, actually, no, I'm sorry. Siegfried, as you begin blinking your eyes, your vision begins to become unclouded, and you can now see the battlefield before you. You, my friend, are no longer blinded, and I will take that effect off of you. It's a miracle! I can see! Oh, I need to go help the other me, and my buddy, Samael. I can't just let him be there. I stab him with ah, and as you stab out with blurred. your rapier still trying to get your eyes back to normal still trying to blink away the, the tears the grime or whatever it was in your eyes and Byron this serpentine like creature its its limbs sort of loosey loosey goosey like strands of spaghetti as it comes forward and attempts to grapple with you, and it looks like it's attempting to wrap its tentacles around you. Its first tentacle attack looping over your head just as you duck out of in the nick of time its second tentacle swipes forward and just manages to strike you and these bits of spikes on the end of its appendage pierce your body going through your armor and its tentacle wraps around your body and you are currently grappled and restrained more of these serpentine creatures begin pouring and 
and running like mad through the thicket of alien vegetation. And Zara, it is your turn. Zara, are you there? Four, sorry. Yeah, I heard what you said. Okay. Um, if I step back five feet, he will have an attack of opportunity, correct. Um, he is currently not engaged with you. He's engaged with Nicholas. All right. Then I'm going to step back. Uh, you know what? Can I reach him from here? Hiding behind Nicholas. <laughs> you can. Alright. Um, ignore that other five foot then. Um, I'm going to hit him with my best shot. That unfortunately is a miss. Did you want to uh, use your War Priest ability to attempt to hit it again? Yeah, yeah, sure. 